all got the news that Jason Kidd was most recently fired. Bucks said they wanted to have a fresh start. I'm going to tell you the real reason why Jason Kidd was fired by the Milwaukee Bucks. It's not going to be what you expect. Now picture this. You're working in Milwaukee. It's cold, negative temperatures every day or every other day. Two to three feet of snow covering your car. You're going to a job that you hate. You're successful at what you do even though that you don't get the full support of your company and you have higher aspirations for yourself. You see the job position that you're at is not necessarily something that you should be doing. Maybe you went to school to study law for you're working at McDonald's. You're in a cold city, you're underpaid, you're not happy with your current position and everything is just not going as you foresaw. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Jason Kidd. He's in Milwaukee and he's in a position, he was in a position, he's no longer there, where he didn't feel like he was gonna excel. Now, just before anybody goes and starts saying, you know, Kidd was a bad coach or he didn't have the coaching pedigree, Jason Kidd is one of the first coaches to take two different teams to the playoffs in his first year in either team. He did that with the Nets. He also did that with the Milwaukee Bucks. You gotta factor this with Kidd. He had a, a roster that has never been fully healthy. Jabari Parker never played a full season. Chris Middleton missed six months last year with a hamstring injury. They had a true point guard until they get traded for Eric Bledsoe. They had an agent, a Jason Terry, 40 years of age. Della Vadova, which is a glorified backup. In today's NBA, you have to shoot three. The Milwaukee Bucks are ranked 27th in three-point shooting. They never brought in consistent shooters. Tony Snell has been inconsistent. And that's basically why the Bucks have struggled mightily in offense for so many seasons. But even with that, Jason Kidd was able to find a way to take his team to the playoffs. Kidd has three seasons where the team is over 500. Regular season winning percentage with the Milwaukee Bucks is 48%. Kidd has had three seasons where the team has been over 500. And that's without Jabari Parker with the ACL. That's with Chris Middleton with the uh, hamstring injury. And when you give you lemons, you make lemonade. That's what he's been able to do with the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks will tell you that they wanted to have a fresh start. But what gets me is if you wanted a fresh start, why would you sign Jason Kidd to a three-year extension for $18 million? If you wanted a fresh start, you should have just left the deal on the table or signed a one-year deal. Or if you weren't so steadfast about Kidd being the head coach, why give him the extension? So I don't think it was anything that had to do with the with the Bucks thinking that they weren't going to keep Kidd. It, it was something deeper than that. Even the players loved him. Giannis Antetokounmpo called Kidd 15 minutes before he was fired just to let him know, hey, they're trying to fire you, and I'm not with that. So he had the loyalty of the players. The fact that Giannis Antetokounmpo was willing to call him and say, hey, what do you want me to do? You want me to call my agent? Basically, Giannis was about to pull a little boycott move to have his coaches back, which showed the loyalty Jason Kidd garnered from his players. So it wasn't anything in terms of necessarily him being an awful, awful coach. Even though he didn't have the greatest record, he still was able to be successful, get some bucks to the playoffs. They loved him. If you look at Giannis Antetokounmpo, he called Kidd and was like, hey, they're trying to get rid of you. This is not right. I'm not with it. So what was it? Essentially, the reason why Jason Kidd was fired is because he never, ever really wanted to be a head coach. In essence, Jason Kidd always was gunning to be a general manager. First things first, Jason Kidd has had a lot of behaviors that are unbecoming of a head coach. We all remember in Brooklyn when he told his assistant coach to hit him with a cup of Hennessy so he could get extra time out against the Lakers. He was he was fined $50,000 for that. And trying to pull a tactic like that as a head coach, not playing within the parameters, trying to cheat the game as a head coach is behavior unbecoming of a head coach, which basically showed you that he didn't care about etiquette of coaching or the sanctity of coaching. He essentially just was trying to win at any cost, even if it was cheating a little bit when you don't have any timeouts. Even in Milwaukee, Jason Kidd decided to have a hip surgery where he was out six to six weeks to two months, like halfway through the season last year. And it was just like, it was a surgery where he could have waited for it. It wasn't even a team for six weeks to two months in the middle of the season. Even with the back injury, which is more severe, Steve Kerr was able to still, you know, kind of go in the locker room after surgery. He was still calling the team, meeting the team. Kid was just basically MIA. He took a, a six weeks to two months sabbatical, basically, and he was out of there. 
Now that's something that shows you he didn't want to coach that team. And here's what we know about Jason Kidd wanting to be a GM. We all remember when the year LeBron James went back to Cleveland. That was a big story. But there was another story where Jason Kidd basically tried to pull a coup d'etat against Billy King in the Brooklyn Nets. As we all know, Jason Kidd went above Billy King's head and he complained and he was trying to get Billy King fired. He wanted to be, he wanted the job as a GM. And you know, Billy King has made some mistakes, but the fact that Jason Kidd was willing to pull such a, a strong power move makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> and he was just so bold. But what it was showing you was he never went to Brooklyn with the mindset, hey, I'm just gonna be a head coach. He always wanted to be a general manager. So he went and tried to pull the power move. Billy King found out because the owner told Billy King, hey, kid saying that you know, you're know you not a good GM, he, he wants to have your position. Billy King, he's like, kid, I'm about to fire you. I'm about to fire you up, boy. I'm about to. Jason Kidd scrambled and he was able to pull up some of his, he used some of his relationships in the NBA to get traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Now at that time, we all remember, Larry Drew was the coach of the Bucks. Larry Drew got fired in the whole trade and whatever the case is for Jason Kidd. And everybody in the Milwaukee organization and the Nets organization described Jason Kidd as a guy who had no regard for coaches or anybody's position. He was just basically ruthless and he was a guy that was looking for power. And what is the ultimate power in an organization? General manager spot. And that's what Jason Kidd wanted. Point blank period. He didn't want to be a coach. He didn't want to be a player. He wanted to get paid handsomely. He didn't want to be underpaid. Even in Brooklyn, he complained about, you know, his salary, he, how he's been underpaid. He was like, wait a minute, I brought this team to the playoffs and I'm still being underpaid. I brought him up to the playoffs my first year and we got this general manager here. I don't agree with the things that he's doing. And essentially, he tried to get his job and that's how he ended up in Milwaukee. Now, in Milwaukee, he made some, he was starting to try to pull a power move there as well. He drafted Rashad Vaughn over Bobby Portis. He got Kenyon Martin a contract with his ties to some agents. In Milwaukee, you started seeing the creepings and the trappings of Jason Kidd trying to pull a power move there and become a GM. I remember when he actually signed with, you know, got traded there or whatever, and he signed his extension. There was always the so-called promise of him a bigger role in the front office. And that's what he, his bigger role in the front office essentially was to become a general manager. And that's what he wanted, because you know, he made the Shy Rashad Vaughn over Bobby Portis. The general the front office wanted Bobby Portis. They didn't want to sign Kenyon Martin. So these are certain things that you start seeing. So the GM of Milwaukee saw what was happening. He said, you know what, I've had enough. We're a 500 team right now. It's not gonna hurt us to, to get rid of this guy because he's coming for my job. And that's what happened. Jason Kidd was coming at number one spot of the GM. Guys got nervous and they said, you know what, F this. We're gonna get up out of here, we're gonna get him up out of here. You know what I'm saying? They mowed their lawn and they got the snake out of the grass, so to speak. And that's essentially why Jason Kidd was fired. Do me a favor, like this video, Hoops Junction, where Hoops meets Hoopla.